Good morning. It is Wednesday, April the 14th. It is hump day. Let's get over this thing. So for review, we reviewed uh, three of your types of partners that we covered yesterday. So in your exit ticket, these are the exact same questions. So if you did okay with your exit ticket, you'll review and get extra credit for these as well. So let's take a look. So Chuck is not working for his company anymore. So he's not active for his company anymore. He's retired and he left control to his daughter, Mia. Even though he's not working for his company any longer, the public remembers him and still gets his, and he still gets his retirement from the company. What type of partner is Chuck? So he's not active anymore, but the public knows his face. So that will be a silent partner. All right, the second one, Frank started his own clothing company with his dad's help. His dad gave him $25,000 to buy inventory. Frank is the only employee. Frank's dad is what type of partner? So Frank's dad just gave him money. That's it. His dad does not work for the company. So his dad is not active and his dad is not known to the public. So his dad is a dormant partner. Not active, not known, is dormant. And then the third one, Tara and Teresa both start an after-school tutoring program for at-risk children. They both share the workload and are known to the public. What type of partners are both Tara and Teresa? They are general partners because they're both working for their company, so they're active, and the public knows their faces. So they share a general partnership. They split everything down the middle. And then remember your other two partners were limited, which would be like your sponsors, like LeBron James. LeBron James is known to the public, so the public knows his face, but he does not work for Nike. So he is not an active employee of Nike. And he has limited liability because he does not make any decisions for Nike. And then your other partner that we didn't cover for today, I mean, excuse me, review for today is secret. Remember secret partner, shh, a secret's out there. So they're working for the company, but people don't know secrets. So they're not known to the public. So secret partners are active, but they're not known to the public. Now, new stuff for today, we're going over corporations. The big boys. All right, so I've just put some pictures up here so you guys would understand what I'm talking about. So corporations, um, you know, they vary in size. They can ha they can have from, you know, 50 employees to you know thousands of employees. You know, they can be public corporations or they can be private corporations. So some of those, um, Nike, Amazon, Sony, Apple, Samsung, Walmart, Sheets, Chick-fil-A. Okay, so these are the big boys. All right, so to start us off, you need to remember, this is on your test, a corporation is an entity. So rem remember the word entity. An entity is something that exists by itself. So if I say outer space, Outer space is an entity. It's made up of thousands of different parts. You got stars and planets and galaxies, the sun, the moon. So outer space is an example of an entity. Your body is an example of an entity. You know how many parts there are to your body? The things, the parts that we see, the parts that we don't see, your blood, your veins, your heart, your organs, your bones. So your body is another example of an entity. So an entity is something that is, we look at it as one thing, like body is one thing, it's a whole, but it's made up of a lot of different parts. Same thing with a corporation. So think of a corporation like Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A has hundreds of different locations. They have corporate offices. They have thousands of employees. They've got a higher fire. They serve all kinds of different foods. So Chick-fil-A, we think of Chick-fil-A as one, 
but it's made up of thousands, hundreds of thousands of smaller parts. So corporations are examples of entities. But a corporation is an entity that has the legal authority. So think about like a courtroom. If you sue Chick-fil-A, you're suing Chick-fil-A, the corporation as a whole. You're not picking apart the individual employees and suing them. You're suing Chick-fil-A. You're not suing the manager at one location. You're not suing Quadarian. You're suing Chick-fil-A. So corporations have the legal authority to act as like a single person in a courtroom. And then I give you guys the example of McDonald's on this slide. So if somebody sues McDonald's, let's say that um, they go through the drive through and um, something over top of the drive through falls and, you know, messes up the hood of their car. You're not going to sue the cashier or the cook. You're going to sue McDonald's. So you're going to actually take McDonald's to court for damages to your car. So you're going to sue McDonald's, the entire corporation. You're not going to sue the individual people that actually own and work for McDonald's. And you guys can tell from this picture on the right, you've got McDonald's as a whole, but you've got all these other people that actually own McDonald's, which are the shareholders, but we'll get to that later. All right, so just reiterating, a corporation is an entity. A corporation is run by managers and the board of directors. Also your shareholders. So if you invest in a corporation that's public, which means that I and you, once you're 18, you can invest in certain companies. And then when the company makes money, you make money. But the company's actually run, is led by your managers and the board of directors. So I know you guys have seen movies and you've seen all these old people sitting down these long tables. That would be an example of a board of directors. So board of directors can have, you know, five people. It can have a hundred people. Just depends on the size of the organization. But just remember that your corporations have an older, more experienced leadership team because these companies employ a lot of people. So there's a lot of pressure on this team of board of directors. So just remember that board of directors, that team of people, they're older, more experienced, they can lead that company in a good direction because so many people are depending on that company. Think about Walmart. I mean, how many people don't go, go, don't go to Walmart in a, in a week? How many people are employed by Walmart? How many other companies, you know, make money off of Walmart? So your board of directors gives your corporation the experience that it needs. And then also, if you actually own shares in a corporation, when they're going to make um, important decisions, so if I own shares of stock in McDonald's, if McDonald's is going to um, make a... Um, some type of, you know, serious move, then they're going to send me a letter in the mail and they want me to vote. So I technically get to vote on decisions that McDonald's makes because I own a small part of McDonald's. And then the bigger part of McDonald's that I own, the more my vote counts. And normally your biggest shareholders are your board of directors. The people that are leading the company, normally they have the their decisions weigh the most. So kind of like in the classroom, if I get you guys to vote whether or not we're going to have a pop quiz, and I say my vote counts 50%, all I need is one other person to agree with me out of 30, and we'll end up having a pop quiz. Whereas if my vote only counts one time, we have 31 people in here, my vote is a smaller portion of that whole. And then all you have to do, if you want to actually form a corporation, you'll become what's called incorporated. You just file some paperwork. So you file an article, it's called an article of incorporation, wherever you actually want to have your company in whatever state. And you can play with that. You've got people that'll help you. If you want to actually run your own company, you want to have it incorporated. 
but you know the paperwork is not that hard for you but that's why you pay people attorneys to help you to file that information all right your types of corporations a public corporation is one that you and i can own a part of so X nay that Chick-fil-A up there because Chick-fil-A is private. This goes with the next one. Let me pull it up real quick. So a public corporation is one that you and I can invest in via the stock market. So a public corporation is, is a company that is authorized, has permission to sell stock to the general public. Usually these companies are very large and they have a substantial revenue and they'll have a large number of shareholders. Hundreds of thousands of people own Walmart. Hundreds of thousands of people own Nike. Hundreds of thousands of people own Apple and Google. And then for your, you guys have played with the stock market stuff this semester already. So like Walmart here, this would be an example. Today you could buy Walmart shares of stock for $74 a piece. So you could actually go to the stock market, have a trading company online, and you could buy shares of Walmart. You could become part owner of Walmart today. And the more you buy, the more of Walmart that you own. And the more your decisions, your votes count. Then you've got private corporations. So these companies, they're large, but whoever started the company, has made the decision to keep the company private. And all that means is, is that that person or that partnership or that family wants to maintain control of that company. Because once a company goes public, once the general public owns a company, the original owners, the original entrepreneurs, they lose the entire control of the company. So if I started Chick-fil-A, I want Chick-fil-A to stay private. I still make decisions what I say goes for Chick-fil-A. And that's, what ha that's what's going on with Chick-fil-A now, with the Truett family. They still control the decisions that are made for Chick-fil-A, just like Sheets. Sheets is another private corporation. So the Sheets family still controls Sheets. When they make a decision, it's done. Whereas with Walmart, it's not like that. So the family of Sam Walton, the original entrepreneur of Walmart, they technically, if they propose something for, for Walmart, a decision to be made, technically they could be outvoted. So the Walmart family, the Walton family, no longer has complete control of that original company that was started by their great grandfather. And that's the main difference between a public and private com company. Public, the original entrepreneur no longer has 100% control of the company. Private, the original entrepreneur still maintains 100% control of your company. And private, they can be used for prop profitable business or you can have a, a charitable corporation like American Cancer Society. And then a wholly owned subsidiary. This is a company um, that has a, a mommy or daddy company, a parent company, however you want to look at it, like Sam's Club. So if you're shopping at Sam's Club, that's Walmart. Walmart owns Sam's Club. Kind of like um, Instagram is a subsidiary of Facebook. Facebook bought Instagram, so Instagram is actually under Facebook. Rocky Mount High School is controlled by Nash County Public Schools. So Rocky Mount High School would be a subsidiary of Nash County Public Schools. So a wholly owned sub subsidiary, this is controlled, completely controlled by its parent organization. And that's what we cover for today. We use the remaining part of the class time to work on your websites. Um, so be sure that you guys are, are constantly working on those. If you have issues, be sure to contact me and let me know what's going on because that, those are a project grade. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.